spirals and coils in Adobe Illustrator is easier than you might think. With automated features built into the newer versions of Illustrator, you need only a few tools to create these elements. Today we'll be working with the Symbols Palette, the Warp Tools, and 3D Rotation. A general understanding of Illustrator tools is also helpful. Okay, let's begin with a few things that we need to actually warp around a 3D object. I've created a couple of banks of lines to show you uh, different ways of making spirals and coils. I basically just filled some boxes and did a uh, distribute, transform, step and repeat to give yourself some spacing between the two. I'm going to leave one set um, perfectly horizontal so that it'll just wrap around the sphere more like rings. And we're going to do uh, another set where we're going to warp this a little bit so that it, when it wraps around your sphere or your object, it's going to look a little bit more like a ribbon. I've gone ahead and drawn some guidelines in here so I can see um, where I need to meet up the ends. When you wrap something around a sphere, your points are going to have to distort and meet. So let's go ahead and select these and then choose, uh, let me see, where do I need to go? I need to go into Envelope Distort. Make with warp, I'm going to choose rise, and let's say, oh, turn on preview, and let's say 11%. That's pretty good. The end here on this point needs to join up with the point here when we wrap the object. So now let's go ahead and take these two objects that we've created, and we're going to throw them into the symbols palette so we can map artwork later. I'll go ahead and just drag the object over as once, and we'll just call these flat lines. And I'll go ahead and select this one and throw it into the symbols palette, and we'll call these one warped lines. All right, now that we have these two items stored in the symbols palette, let's go ahead and just park them over on the pasteboard, and I'll turn off my guides. Let's begin with a sphere. Uh, holding down the shift key, we'll go ahead and create a circle. Um, it can be pretty much any size, you're going to scale it later. And we need to rotate it, so let's get rid of one side of this sphere and get rid of the fill and change it to a stroke. I'm going to use Shift X for this. You need a surface to map to, so the stroke will allow us a mapping surface. Now we'll go under Effect and we'll choose 3D and we'll choose Revolve. And bring this palette over and we'll ask for a preview. Now, we're going to go ahead and map art to this object. There are two surfaces because the stroke has, essentially when it's revolved, an inside and an outside. Side one generally is your outside surface. However, sometimes if the path is backwards, side one might be your inside. So let's go ahead and tell it invisible geometry so we do not see the actual stroke. This will turn this off. And let's go ahead and choose the flat lines first. And you can see with the preview that they're going to come up and you go ahead and stretch your lines out and create your sphere. Go ahead and get it in there. You can stretch it any amount you want. And then we can choose OK. When we're back in 3D, we can rotate the object. Now you can't see the lines very well, but we can go ahead back into Map Art and tell it to shade the artwork. So now you can kind of see what your sphere lines have created. These have created basically rings around the globe. Let's go back into Map Art and choose Clear. And let's go ahead and choose the Warped Lines. We'll go ahead and fill this in here. Stretch this up. We're going to leave Shade Artwork on. And let's go ahead and stretch that up past the point a little bit, which will round the ends. We'll choose OK, and now you can see that the sphere has created more of a ribbon. By warping those lines, when the ends join up in a particular place, the top of one end and the bottom of the other kind of join up. You will still be able to rotate the sphere in any direction you want, and your mapped art will rotate with it. You can map your art to things other than spheres as well. You can map them to a tube or a cone, so let's go ahead and just create a tube here. And I'll go ahead and get, run of, get rid of one of those lines so we can revolve it. We've got it selected. We'll go back up under 3D and we'll choose Revolve. Go ahead and turn on the preview. You can see that's come up. Let's go into Map Art. Now you're going to have more, more surfaces will be involved. This will be the top, there'll be a bottom, there'll be an inside top, an inside bottom. Sometimes you just kind of have to play around with it and see what you're going to get. 
I think this is going to be the outside, so let's go ahead and just see. And it doesn't look like it is, so let's just clear this and figure out which surface. They could have made this a little bit easier, but it doesn't always work that way. So let's choose surface 6, which looks like to be the outside. We've got the lines up here, and we can stretch them like this. See them show up over here. Tell it invisible geometry. Now it's created rings. Tell it to shade the artwork. It's a great way for making stacks of rings. If you pull to the top a little bit, you'll shorten the top bottom because it'll actually be cropped out of the available artwork space, and you can kind of move it up and down. Go ahead and choose OK so that you can see that. Now let's go back into Map Art again and tell it to clear. And go ahead and select our warped lines, place them into the object, and give them a stretch like this. And you can see that a coil has been created. You can still rotate this coil in 3D any way you want, kind of like spiral for spiral binding. Um, Anything you do, you can change its lighting surface, where it's going to light. Um, you are not limited to just one color in your, in your thing. You could make multiple colors of lines. You could do different lines. Um, you need to avoid gradients because they're blends, and the symbols palette can't really handle those. In fact, it'll just tell you it contains elements that you can't use. But you can play around with different things, more lines, less lines, different colors. You could also try dots, um, different patterns, strokes, squares, uh, triangles, brush strokes, different things will give you different outcomes.